Hey, awesome disease and public health students. Going to use these slides to uh, discuss bioterrorism, um, both some history research that I did and um, some of the information that you'll be reading about in Gladwin as homework. Um, so, looking at bioterrorism, the first thing that um, probably should be discussed is what's called biological warfare, um, which is kind of the origin of what we now call bioterrorism. Um, it's got a long and very disturbing history. Um, you can look up a number of different things. I'm just going to hit a couple of the kind of big historical highlights. Um, the first one uh, was the um, siege of Cry uh, Crimean city of, I think it's Kaffa. This happened in 1346. Uh, it was under siege by, uh, I guess it's Tatar forces. Um, but this is kind of the first evidence that was actually documented that historians point to of actual biological warfare. Um, the sieging army catapulted the corpses of people who had been infected or died of the plague into the city. Uh, and cause an outbreak of uh, the plague, which is uh, actually a bacterial disease. It's a bacteria called Yersinia, uh, Yersinia pestis, and that began to spread uh, through the population. Now, uh, the reason this is notable is because they think that people either fleeing from this war or soldiers returning from this siege and this war are um, the people who brought the plague to Europe at this time. And right after that, right after 1346, was the beginning of what was called uh, the Black Death. Now, the plague had been around before and had had several outbreaks before and since then, but this killed uh, hundreds of millions of people. This is one of the most deadly disease outbreak that the world has ever seen, and I think it stemmed from the siege of the city um, and the use of these bodies. Um, so pretty scary there. Um, a little bit later in history, in 1763 in the Americas, uh, Fort Pitt, which is uh, it, where, uh, it's where Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is now, um, it was occupied by the Lunapi, or the Delaware Native Americans. It was under siege by the British Army during what was called Pontiac's War, which is kind of an extension of the French and Indian War. Um, and during a uh, parley, um, where they were meant to kind of be trying to make uh, work things out, make peace offerings, um, Jeffrey Amherst, who was this uh, British general, um, approved the delivery of two blankets and a scarf that were laden with smallpox. Uh, and so this is something you might hear about as kind of like a scary fact in history, but this actually did happen. They have letters documenting this. Um, and so they say it possibly resulted in an outbreak that killed hundreds of people. The reason they say possibly is because um, smallpox was already spreading amongst the Native American population at that point. And so there's no definitive evidence to say that this actual historical moment um, caused an outbreak of smallpox uh, when it was already present and around, um, but still pretty horrible that um, they were willing to result to these measures uh, in conflict. Now, there's plenty of um, fictional depictions of um, bioterrorism and biological warfare. Uh, if you've ever seen V for Vendetta, the whole premise of the comic book and movie uh, is basically a government using a disease to control people. Um, they, they basically cause an outbreak. Um, so sorry if I gave the twist away in that. Um, Stephen King's The Stand, which is an excellent book if you ever want to read or check out something. There's also a very good comic book version, uh, but it's a fictional outbreak of a, um, d a disease that was designed by the military called Captain Trips. Um, that's really just the premise, though. Um, the rest of the book is more just about good versus evil, that kind of thing. Uh, if you've seen 12 Monkeys, um, not talking about the new TV show. This is an older movie with Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt, and uh, Madeline Stowe. Uh, but it's also, again, kind of the aftermath of what um, was thought to be a, bio a, a biological terrorist attack it ends up being more of a, a twist to it. But again, it's a disease that uh, wipes out humans and, and there's time travel and things like that. It's a pretty cool movie. But again, all of these are based on events of bioterrorism or biological warfare. So, And there's lots of other stuff, too, you can check out. Uh, if you have any recommendations, let me know. Now, um, in seven, 1975, uh, a big event, uh, the UN had the Biological Weapons Convention, where they basically had all countries uh, sign a treaty that prohibited the production and stockpiling of biological weapons. Uh, virtually every single country signed and ratified it. There are a couple exceptions, um, but overall, this is pointed to as a pretty big success and a, a big move away from um, biological weapons, biological warfare. I would also note that the, the dawn of nuclear um, power and nuclear weapons kind of, I think, distracted from biological warfare stuff too. Um, the country's got more obsessed with blowing things up. So your textbook, uh, The Gladwin, talks about uh, bioterrorism and basically uh, the different classifications of um, potential like biological weapons. They call them category A. These are the most dangerous disease agents that would probably most likely be effective 
as biological weapons or used for bioterrorism. Uh, the first one we've talked about before is anthrax. Again, it's a, a bacteria called Bacillus anthracis, um, produces a, a, a toxin. Um, what makes this unique, again, is that it is um, uh, an, an endospore, right? That it's able to um, survive really well as just a dry powder uh, and can be stored anywhere and then can be activated by just adding water or getting released into the environment. Um, it causes internal bleeding and fluid buildup wherever it enters the body, right? So it can be inhaled and infect the lungs. Um, it can get into broken skin, it can uh, enter the digestive tract and infect there, it can be injected straight into the bloodstream, um, so there's lots of areas that it can attack from. Uh, again, mortality rate is really high, but uh, obviously we do have antibiotics that can treat it, so anthrax is a treatable thing. You just need to receive antibiotics pretty much immediately and continue to take them for a long period of time to ensure no extensive damage. Uh, they have this funny looking image here, but again, the point is that it could be released by a crop duster over a city. Uh, your book references how like even just one little can of it released over a major city would cause hundreds of thousands of deaths. Uh, it could be placed onto animal hides or things like that or in an envelope. Um, so there's lots of ways that it could be spread that makes it effective as a weapon. Uh, smallpox obviously would be another one uh, that's called, caused by what's called the variola virus, very large and complex virus. Um, the reason that this could also be an effective bioterrorist agent is because it's no longer vaccinated for. Um, so in 17, uh, 1972, the U.S. stopped vaccinating for smallpox, um, who declared smallpox completely eradicated in 1980. It's just not around anymore, so we don't take precautions against it. So if it was to suddenly be released again, um, it could potentially be bad. It's very contagious, has about a 30% uh, death toll, which again, let's com compare that to the 2% death toll that COVID-19 is currently at. Um, and again, it uh, causes skin pustules, right? The idea of like, um, they describe it as uh, like dew drops on a rose petal. That's what develops on your skin. Um, and uh, it can permanently scar you even if you are able to recover. You've seen this image from the National Geographic. So those are scars from um, smallpox outbreak. Here you can see the smallpox themselves. They collect on the face. Um, so it doesn't look pleasant to have, uh, and again, will permanently scar you. But we also now have um, very effective vaccines and very effective uh, some treatments, some antivirals for smallpox um, itself. In fact, smallpox was, smallpox was the first um, disease to be vaccinated against. Uh, we talked about Edward Jenner, who noticed that um, milkmaids were not uh, contracting smallpox as much uh, because they were exposed to a lighter form of it called cowpox, which was basically building up their immunity to the actual smallpox. And so he uh, used that little injection process to then start vaccinating children, uh, as you read about. Um, then there's the plague itself. Again, this is caused by bacterium, Yersinia pestis. Uh, again, it has largely been wiped out. There uh, are probably some samples around still. Same with sm smallpox, um, but those are all under strictly under control. Um, again, what makes Yersinia pestis dangerous is that it really only infects two known mammals, rodents and humans, uh, and it's spread specifically by fleas uh, and the bite of fleas as they move from rodents to humans. Uh, there's two forms that are common, right? Bubonic is the one everyone hears about. It's uh, referred to bubonic because it causes massive swelling of uh, your lymph nodes in different parts of your body. Uh, you can also have it pneumonic, meaning it enters the lungs, but um, it causes a variety of uh, symptoms. One of them is a dry gangrene necrosis of the extremities. So uh, fingertips, uh, toes, uh, the nose, the sort of thing that tissue just doesn't get any blood anymore uh, and dies off and it turns black. Uh, same thing that you see with frostbite, but this is why um, it was referred to as the black death because uh, that was a common symptom seen amongst people who are dying from the disease. Uh, and again, I think we do have some antibiotics that can be effective against this now. Um, the way, again, it's spread, it has this kind of funny little paperclip shape. That's the bacteriums uh, that um, cause the plague, Yersinia pestis. And they tend to be present in wild rats. The problem is then if rats are attracted to human uh, habitation by food, waste, that kind of thing, unsanitary conditions, right? It attracts rats. Uh, when rats are living closely with humans, that's when the fleas are able to transfer from the rats to humans, bite them, and uh, spread the disease. So uh, that's why you often see rats associated with uh, the plague uh, in images and, and readings and things like that. So to read more about this, hope this was helpful.